You're listening to the Teach Better Talk podcast featuring expert educators eager to share progressive tactics to reach more students. Teach Better Talk is created by teachers and fueled by passion. Let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome to episode 173 of Teach Better Talk. My name is Ray Hewart, and as always, I'm with my mercurial friend, Jeff Gargas, and I did get that word in the second take, Jeff Gargas. That's a that's a good word. Tough word. It's a, a tough word. word. I couldn't, you know, it's like you're trying to keep it with the sentence and also sound it out at the same time. I don't use that in my basic vocabulary. I'm going to start using. Yeah. So where that, I mean, that, that word doesn't, that, where does that come from? Oh, you don't believe, that from? you don't believe I made it up? Is, is that, is that what's happening right now? Did you make up the word? It's an actual word. I don't think you made it up. It, it's an actual word and it was provided by our amazing guest, which you get to hear the episode in just a little bit. We're going to banter for a minute, but then you get to hear his amazing interview and he came up and submitted that word for you. Oh, I like it. I know. That's good stuff. I like Accurate. that he was a Team Ray fan, but um, I think it's really sweet that, you know, you tried to buddy up with him. It's really cute. You guys had a, a budding friendship in the beginning and then it ended. Let's be clear that he never, he never admitted to Team Ray. Um, he did. But he is Team Ohio. Like that's a for sure. He's from the Cleveland area. He lives in Cincy. Like, you might have to give this one up. I anyway. refuse. Anyway, how's your day going so far? <laughs> My day's good. Um, I'm pretty pumped because today we announced three more speakers for the conference. And I was hoping we could just jab about them for a few minutes because we were just talking about before this, like, you and I were just talking about sort of how cool it is that we get to put on a conference with all these amazing educators and how much value they bring us like forget about all of you listening and everything that we did like that way yeah the conference great but like how much value we get just from from that let alone i mean and then it's so awesome that we get to that we get to share that with everyone else and and push that out and stuff so well hasn't that um, been kind of the coolest part of not, not only we do a lot of things on the team but the conference specifically when yeah. our committee comes together and brainstorms speakers that we really want to showcase and amplify the story of, a lot of those people that, that we begin to bring in right off the bat are people that have massively influenced us, not only you know yeah. as educators, but on the Teach Better team and in a thousand different ways of, of just supporting us or um, pouring knowledge into us and all these other elements that when, I, when we released our final three for this initial launch, I was so taken back. I almost, I like sat in awe looking at this list because I typed all of their names out this morning. <laughs> and I was like, holy cow, this is literally 11 educators that have had a dramatic impact on, on my growth. I'm so mm -hmm. honored that they're willing to be a part of this event. And I think that people are kind of stoked, Jeff Gargas. I think people are stoked. I think that'd be an accurate word. Um, stoked. Stoked. I know that's, that's where I'm at. I'm stoked. Well, I won't lie. Like, I've also like gotten to talk to them pretty recently because yeah. a lot of them have like scheduled phone calls with me for some exciting things that we'll be announcing, you know, a few weeks from now. But these are just really good people that have impacted me a ton. I'm sure impacted you as well. Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, just you you run down a list. I mean, and and also just it's impacted. It's it's the value, but they're also just like cool people. I yeah. mean they're fun to talk to they're super nice they're and ridiculously helpful like there's just it's all around like that that's what i loved most about our conference was like just the relationship you built because you're the, here's all these people that have a ton of value to provide and offer but also like just the friendship right in general is just well and that's what we wanted we had a conversation about this i know i'm sure you remember it but last week we were talking about the feel of the conference so it was most important mm -hmm. for us and the culture i hate to say is is by far the first thing we care about for this conference. When we were mm -hmm. talking about like what we wanted when we were putting together our, our speaker list of who we were initially gonna reach out to and, and all these other elements of wanting to fill the room with the right people, um, a lot of it came down to who's willing to not only share their awesome ideas, but also stick around and be an active part of yeah. you know the networking events. That, that's a requirement almost. I mean, I say almost, but it truly was a requirement that all these people didn't just like show up and then need to head out for a flight, but really showed up and were present with our group. So I'm so excited for 
the people that we have. Should we run through the 11, by the way? Yeah, let's run through the, yeah, let's just boom, boom, boom. Let's run through them really quick. Okay, I have this graphic I'm going to cheat off of because I just released this today and I love the design of it. All right, so we have Dr. Valerie Camille Jones, who we've talked about that. She's an amazing teacher at the Ron Clark Academy in Atlanta. Dr. Neil Gupta, we couldn't even say, uh, I mean, his resume is like, oh my goodness, the amazing impact he's had on education. Rochelle Dene Poth, we have uh, CJ Reynolds. Dude, his book just came out. It is so sticky. Mm -hmm. good. Allison Epsi's on here. I'm so excited to see her face. Um, Mandy Freilich, we just announced today when we're recording this. Yep. Mandy Freilich is going to be an amazing addition. We have George Valenzuela, Kevin Butler. We have uh, Sarah Thomas. Holy cow. And uh, P. Sloan Joseph, not to mention, of course, you know, a few members of the Teach Better team. So it's just people you, that... You, you forgot Matt Miller. Oh, my God, Matt Miller. I mean, Matt Tech Miller. Like a Pirate just dropped. It's the hottest book in the world right now. <sighs> yes, Matt coming over. And that's not to downplay anything else. I just, I, I was waiting. I was like, I'm looking on the website, which is a different layout than what you have. Yeah. But uh, yeah, talk about a... Yeah, and then you and me and shit, like, we're going to be there too. That's fun, but... Yeah, I'm just so a, thrilled. And the best part, Jeff, I do want to make sure our listeners know this. Proposals are open. So if I'm not going to tell you anything yep. that you don't probably already know, not any secrets, but truly, we have these initial speakers of people that we are saying, hey, they're going to be there. They're so excited to meet you. But when you submit a proposal, we want you to share your story as well. So we're not only looking through proposals that are going to add value to the to our, our conference, obviously, but you then become part of the family. You're a featured speaker. We want to fill our graphics with not only these amazing educators, but also the amazing educators that we didn't just list off who are listening or part of our family or doing amazing things in education. You should be a part of this as well. So you have to make sure you submit your proposal at teachbetterconference.com. It's due by the end of the month. We, it was originally going to close April at the end of April, and now it's going to close at the end of May which kind of gives us, you know, a month or so to go over it. We're going to let our speakers know if they were selected by like August 1st ish. And uh, then the conference is, not, is in October. So that brings everyone together. Family party for the weekend. I'm so excited. <laughs> and if you speak at, or at the conference, you do not pay to attend. So you get yeah. to come and hang out with all these other people and go to all the sessions that you want uh, for both days. Come, act come Thursday because we kick it off Thursday night. And then you go home Sunday because we don't stop at the end of the sessions on Saturday. We go Guys, through Saturday night. You are going to be so tired Saturday night. Do not <laughs> leave Saturday night. I promise you. You don't leave Saturday don't night. Don't leave Saturday night. <laughs> we have plenty of people flying out super early Sunday with zero sleep, and that's okay. Seriously, I remember. That's how it's supposed to be. Sunday morning, I left your house because I stayed with your amazing family that weekend. We left at like 3 a.m. and I was in the car with Becky and CJ Reynolds at like 3.30 in the morning and we were so tired. Uh, it was so fun. I was just happy that I didn't have to take you. I know. See, you owe <laughs> Becky and CJ. They are. I do. Correct. I owe them for a lot of things. Okay. But to be honest, half the conference was at the airport that morning. We were all excited. <laughs> I should have just went for the party. It's true. Uh yeah, so that's super exciting. So everything's at teachbetterconference.com, like Ray said. Uh, get over there, submit a session, get signed up. Uh, super pumped to see everyone. So this is it's getting excited. Well, let's talk about this episode. I want to get into it really quick. So Chris Anderson is a – he describes himself as a science educator and communicator. Um, he is the – he works with Hamilton County ESC as – uh, plays a few different roles and there's a lot of work with Cincinnati Public School um, helping work with uh, basically an instructional uh, coach position for multiple districts uh, supporting the county level and then he does some really cool stuff with something called Science Around Sensi down in Cincinnati, Ohio uh, I'm going to let him talk a little bit more about that but this is a dude that is super passionate about science and I love what he's done with this uh, Science Around Sensi and how it's not only spreading the joy of of science and and increasing the interest for kids and stuff like that but he's also connected to a lot of other pieces of the community and i think it's really really cool um so i'm pumped for this episode ray do you have anything to add to that or should we just rock i am a fan let's do this episode 173 with chris anderson hey guys we'll get right back to the episode but really quick i want to highlight the webinar series that the teach better team is offering over at teachbetter.com slash webinar series. And did I mention, y'all, it's free. So you can join myself, Chad Urshowski, 
Mandy Freilich, Kevin Butler, and Jennifer and Hans Apple as we dive into educator mental health, remote learning essentials, the grid method, engagement, and so many other elements that can support you to be better at a distance. And you can go register right now at teachfire.com slash webinar series. All right, I've told you enough information. Let's get back to this awesome episode. All right, we are here and we are chatting with Chris Anderson. And Chris, it's been exciting just chat with you for a little bit. You're from Ohio. I'm from Ohio. So we got Ray outnumbered already, which is great. Got to represent. Uh, I, love, I love that we're both Eastern time zones, so she can't tell us that we're in the wrong time. Uh, so we're going to start this off with a bang of me taking a, a shot at Ray. So that's great. But super excited to kind of learn about what you're doing and your experience and your story. But before we get too far into that, how are you feeling right now? You know, uh, Cold. It's cold today uh, <laughs> here in Ohio. It is. And, and I'm uh, guessing in Illinois too. Um, but, you know, it's, we're, we're very fortunate. Um, you know, we're both able to work from home, my wife and I. So we're just, you know, we're very grateful that we are able to do that. And we've got our health and all our family members are, are healthy too. So I think right now we're just, we're just considering ourselves very lucky. So that's probably how I'm, that's probably the biggest feeling I, I have right now. See, that's so good. See, Chris, I'm very secure in my standing on this podcast, even with Jeff picking on me, because I can just tell you're a great person and just super well-rounded. I think that you're going to be Team Ray by the end of this. I'm not really too worried about it at all. Well-rounded, um, much much like the state of Ohio. Exactly. See, and I know that you have that in common with Jeff, but I don't think that's enough to actually keep you Team Jeff this entire podcast, because I okay. get you, buddy. I, I understand really? you. Yeah, I feel like the prettiest girl at the dance now, so exactly. this is great. Exactly. You are are. Um, before we get too far in to our episode where we're going to just shower you with, with celebration and talk about how amazing you are, because you mm. are, which is why you're Team Ray, um, would you tell us a little bit about <laughs> what uh, you do in education? So I guess I'll start with my kind of my day job. So by day, I work with uh, work for the Hamilton County ESC as an instructional coach. Um, and most, almost all of my time uh, with them is spent working with teachers in Cincinnati public schools. So I've done curriculum coaching this year. I was doing uh, more data coaching uh, in elementary school. It was the first time I was in an elementary school and that was really exciting because most of my experience has been in high school. So, uh, you know, by day I'm really just working with teachers and helping them, you know, improve their, improve what they do in the classroom with the kids. And then at night, I, you know, come home and I change out of my suit and tie and I put on my superhero outfit. And then I produce and host a, a video series called Science Around Cincy. And what we do with that is uh, we feature different scientists and engineers and researchers around town. And we share their story and they take us to their labs. They take us out to the field. And they show us how they learn more about the world. And it's been a whole lot of fun. So uh, we're, we finished our first season a few months ago. We're getting ready for a second season this upcoming uh, summer and fall. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's really just a great project to get kids, uh, you know, not, not just teaching them science, but getting them excited about science and getting them excited about scientific careers and exposing them to all these different pathways you can you can go on to be a scientist. All right, so now I got to ask and have you kind of tell us the backstory of uh, science around Sensi. So how did that all begin? How did you, is that something you started or is that something that was already there or? No, that, that... that was, that was me. I mean, it okay, was me so... and a lot of other people helping me for, um, you know, not being compensated so for their let, time. <laughs> let, let's go down memory lane. Tell us yes. like, when did that start? And kind of, I'm, I'm curious to know what, what led you to that and said, hey, I need to start this thing and I need to work with these people and this is what we need to do. Like, where did that all come from? You know, that's a good question. So I was, a while ago, I was doing some writing. I had like a science blog and then, you know, it's, it's so hard to cut through the noise, as you guys well know, as content creators yourselves, um, you know. So I started doing some writing for some local, um, some local papers and some online publications and someone gave me a really good piece of advice that I should focus on stories that are here in Cincinnati as opposed to trying to, uh, you know, take these national stories and, you know, put a square peg in a round hole and try to make them relevant to people's lives here, which is what I was kind of 
trying to do. And so I thought like, you know, it could be do- cool to do like a video series on different scientists here. So I ended up crossing paths with uh, a guy named John Gibson, who is a professor of electronic media and broadcasting at Northern Kentucky University, which is, you know, 10 minutes across, uh, across the Ohio mm-hmm. River. And uh, we got to talking and he's a big Star Wars nerd and I'm a big Star Wars guy. And we became very quick friends, but he also has a lot of he, he, he's, you know, directed feature films. He's had a lot of uh, experience in production. So he was just a really great thought partner in, you know, bouncing ideas, off, you know, someone to bounce ideas off to, to really make what I had in my head a reality. So, but the, the key there was um, Northern Kentucky University has a student production wing called Norse Media. And so when I was able to get a little bit of funding, we were able to work with the students at NKU to produce it. So it's, it's directed by students. It's edited by students. They're involved in the production. Um, you know, they do the sound engineering, animations, all that stuff. So I do a lot of the pre-production work, but they, they take what we put together and they make it look really, really great. So, um, you know, I'm really lucky that I've got a, a great team of, you know, college students and people who are willing to, you know, advocate for me and, you know, go out on a limb and, you know, give us a little bit of funding. And um, so that's, that's kind of how it all came together. And now that we're, we're gearing up towards the second season where we've, you know, been able to expand our team, we were able to expand more, um, you know, feature more scientists and things like that. So it's, it's been a lot of fun. That's really cool. Cause not only are you sharing value and spreading the love of science and the, the, the education of science, but you also providing, uh, invaluable experience for these kids that are working oh, yeah. at the college level uh and and the, you know you're highlighting your community it's such a cool combination of of things that you're doing there with, that's really really neat so um let's talk uh, let's we're gonna stay on story time so one <laughs> of the things that i love is is, is sharing, sharing stories of failures and challenges that we've had in our lives i always joke that i've been fortunate enough to fail a whole lot because <laughs> i've learned from everything and that's who i am today and why i am who i am for better or worse uh, so I wonder if you could share with us the time that you've had a failure or a challenge, something you had to overcome in your life. Tell us what it, what it was, how did you overcome it, and then what did you take away from that experience? So the last year I spent in the classroom was really tough. That was, it was hard on me. Uh, I had really like spread myself thin. I was coaching track and cross country and doing like academic quiz team. And then, you know, as, as you guys will know, teachers get drafted into being on these different building initiatives. And, you know, I had some outside commitments um, with some STEM stuff that I had just really spread myself way, way too thin. And, you know, there were, there were quite a few issues in the classroom and I had, you know, a challenging group of kids that year. Um, and, and I think the, the biggest the biggest break was when a student that I had uh, developed a really strong relationship with, you know, we butted heads a lot, but we, we, we worked together. You know, I moved him into the honors class, you know, he lost a battle with depression and, you know, I didn't probably couldn't tell you at the time, but like it definitely took a toll on me and I, in ways I didn't even realize. So, um, you know, you, you ever have those years where, you know, you're just, you're feeling like you're holding your classroom together with your, you know, with your, just your bare hands. <laughs> um, and as hard as that was, I learned a really good lesson. And that was sometimes you just need to say no, and that you can't be all things to all people. So, you know, you got to be choosy with what you choose to, to participate in, what you choose to work on. And it, needs to be aligned with, you know, your, what you want to accomplish. And, you know, that's not to say that you shouldn't try new things and experiment and explore. Like that's a big part, part of my life. And it's been a really big part of um, the person whom I've become. But, um, you know, you, sometimes you gotta, you gotta do really do some pruning. um, Cause if not the, you know, the things get out of control and that's, that was a, a really good lesson to learn. You know, Chris, it's so funny. I was just talking about this same concept literally earlier today. I had, I feel like a meeting every single hour. My day was packed. And one of the amazing meetings I had was with a friend. And we just got to like catch up and talk shop and get a little bit of business done. 
But we really talked about this idea of just like you said, I like how you phrase it, being choosy about what you choose to be involved in, right? Like I kind of right. like that phrasing because you're right. And I think that I know I've been there. I know there's so many educators listening who have been there where you kind of get to a point in your career where you're saying yes to everything. And then something hits you, usually something very challenging, and you start to see the art of being choosy. And um, I think that it's kind of a message that listeners need to hear right now, especially during the the stress of what's going on in the world and, and everything else going mm-hmm. on, is that we really do need to be specific with our time. And sometimes that is stepping away and not, like you said before, also like not being able to be everything for everyone, right? And I, I really like that, that you're able to share that message because it's it's so accurate and so important to remember. Yeah, that's that's a that I, is a lesson my mom definitely uh, shared with me. That, that's a Mary Anderson original. She like, can't be all things to all people. Yeah. Um, and you know, it's it. I'm sure you guys get this. You know, you get pieces of advice, especially from your parents, and especially when you're younger, because you know your parent. When you're younger, you think your parents, you know, don't know anything, and. Uh, and, and part of being such, such an important part of being young is testing those waters and, you know, going out and trying new things. But, um, yeah, that was a, I think you're a hundred percent right. It's the, you can't do all things at an excellent level. So you got to choose which ones you re- are really, really meaningful to you. So, and you're right. There's with everything that's going on now, like something's going to drop. So you got to choose what that's going to be. Well, and I find that, and not, I know that I have another question I want to ask you, but on this topic specifically, because it was truly something I was speaking about earlier today as well, you kind of almost have to go through the phase of saying yes to a lot of things so that you can learn what you should be saying no to. Yes. I mean, it, it kind of like opens up the doors, you become more self-aware and you become more, um, You, I guess self-aware is really what I mean is truly what do you what can you say yes to that you really love and what can you put away to the side that actually isn't you know serving you in the same way so while it's a double edged sword of you know hopefully reminding our listeners that you don't need to say yes to everything and you should find that balance of saying no sometimes it takes you saying yes to the wrong things to learn that you should have said no you know now are you and are you guys both the type of people who are like will really get excited about a really cool education initiative. And you're like, oh, man, I just love that. I want to be involved and do all that. Because that's something I feel, too. It's like I see something that's really cool and really valuable. And my reaction, my, my gut you know, instinct is to say, I'm going to dive in you know, head first. A thousand percent, yeah. I never get excited about anything. <laughs> no, Jeff and That's I call it shiny objects. Like we joke about it. We're like, hold on. Is this yeah. a thing that we really believe in that aligns with what we're doing? Or is this just a shiny object? Right. And right. being able to kind of have a process to evaluate if it's a shiny object, is it something I'm going to go after? Or is it something I'm going to pause on? It is really important. I think everybody needs to have their own system for those shiny object situations. Oh, for sure. Our, sure. our system, unfortunately, is one of us brings it to the other one, and then we get excited, too, and we just go yes. for it. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, let's, we should really say no. Yeah, we're saying yes. Let's say yes. Jeff That's kind of how the podcast started. I was going to say the podcast. podcast. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, right? I mean, so same we, with the conference, right? I mean. Oh, my God. We anyway. have all this. But either way, well, first I have to know. I mean, you've done – so many different things. I, I can only imagine the shiny objects you've interacted with. And a lot of them, a lot of them have turned out as massive successes. But in terms of education, everything you're doing, what really has you excited right now about education? You know, they're, like we're, we're living, definitely living in a very unique period. And I think, I think we you know, all want to live in a less interesting time but we're you know we're, we're in the time that we're in but i think it's it is giving us as educators at you know every different level an opportunity to really rethink how we teach because right now we can't rely on the things we've always done and i think it's a just a really good opportunity to be creative you know the the worksheet we've been assigning <laughs> for the last five or 10 or whatever many years, like it was boring before, but it's even more boring now that we have to do it on, on a computer. And you know, it's, it's, it's even 
that like the hurdles are even higher. So, but you know, we're, we have this, a high reward, low risk situation. Let's try something. See, we don't have the, the, the exams at the end of the year or the state tests or, you know, all that's all the stuff we've griped about. We, that none of that's hanging over our heads. And, you know, and I think we, we talked about this at the beginning of the podcast. Like, I don't, I don't want to belittle any challenges that people are facing right now because a lot of folks are going to have real financial hardships and health scares. And I think it's exposed a whole lot of is- issues teachers have been raising, talking about for years, even decades. You know, kids don't have access to basic needs. But if we can do something, let's do something. Let's try something creative. We, we, are in, we might not be in control of all, the whole situation, but we're definitely in control of our own instruction and, and the, the create, amount of creativity we can do. I mean, I, I just thought like an idea, I was talking to somebody a few days ago, like you, could, you could assign a ki- each kid a sketch to do at home and to, to represent like a different historical character and every kid does a different historical character in their home and they upload it on to your classroom tiktok or whatever and you could host your own classroom saturday night live like that would be so much fun you could get and you could get kids you know who aren't comfortable performing in front of their peers like they would just be on a video and it could just circulate within your class no one else out of your class would have to know so just like stuff like that. And then if it works, great. If it doesn't, like, who cares? Like, it's, it's not that big a deal. <laughs> you know, like, there, there's not going to be a penalty for you if, if it doesn't work out in a really great way. So I think that it is an exciting time because we can, like, the, all the rules are gone. So let's see, kind of see what happens. I think absolutely. That is a, a silver lining to what we're working with right now. So if you had one piece of advice, you know, listeners who are who are taking this all in, loving not only your shared elements of your story of your life, but also, I mean, your kind of like call to action to try something new. What is a piece of advice that you feel like an educator needs and during these current times? Um, that's a good question. Um, you know, if you're, an, I think if you're a new teacher, I I, I would tell this in like brand new teachers, and it was which is without a, without a hint of irony that you're going to get a lot of advice from people and you, you really just got to find out what works for you. Um, don't, you can't copy what anybody else does in the classroom because it's not going to, all of it's not going to work for you. So, um, you know, and the, really the, the other big thing I would say for teachers is to take care of yourselves, exercise, <laughs> eat healthy. And probably the most important thing is get enough sleep. Like, I can't, I can't, I, I read uh, Why We Sleep last year and it completely changed my life. And you feel like after, once you start getting eight hours of really good sleep every night, you feel like your, your brain got 17 times bigger. It's you, you just feel like you can do so much more and you can negotiate all the stresses of life and teaching um, when you're doing all three of those things and you're really taking care of each, uh, care, care of yourself. So I think that is, that, that's something I really try to stress with teachers. Good advice. Uh, finding yourself, I mean, just, yes, yeah, so important to find your own voice, not try to copy after something else. And then, yeah, and to do that to the best you your, of your capabilities, you got to take care of yourself. Right? You got to take care of yourself. It's a huge point. So great advice there. All right, let's, uh, let's have a little bit of fun with these next six. The next six <laughs> questions we're going to do, your goals answer each one in 15 seconds or less. Okay. Ready to go? I'm re- ready as I'll ever be. What is one ad tech tool you cannot live without? Well, obviously my YouTube channel, because that's how we, I get content out and, um, you know, that's how we, we produce our show. So I couldn't, I couldn't live without YouTube now. And that'd be, that'd be, that'd be really hard. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Give us a book you're reading right now. Uh, okay. So I'm reading the, an indigenous people's history of the United States. Um, and it's, it's very good. It's, uh, a different way to think about the history of our country through the eyes of the indigenous people. Um, and then if I don't, because it's, it can be, it can be pretty heavy uh, stuff. So if it's the kind of day where I just need to like check out, I'm reading uh, the golden compass, um, which is uh, wonder delightful uh, children's fiction, but it's really good. <laughs> 
Uh, who do we need to follow on Twitter or Instagram today? Uh, well, obviously, uh, you need to follow Science Around Cincy to stay uh, uh, updated on all the cool stuff that we're going to do. So um, we actually just hired a, uh, a student social media manager who is, uh, you know, she's 21 and uh, far more proficient as, than me at social media as a 33-year-old. So um, that's really great. Um, the other thing I will, I'll say is you should follow zoos. Always follow zoos. The Cincinnati Zoo and the Oregon Zoo are two that I like to follow because um, they've just been producing really great content with the animals. And, um, you know, the, the Cincinnati Zoo, they had a, a cheetah and it has a, a dog companion and they are very good friends and they go for walks together. And that, that, that just brightens, brightens my day when I've been reading too much news. I like it. That's a that's a good one. We've been watching a lot of the zoo cams. Yeah. Also, we we rate dogs, but everyone already knows that. <laughs> <laughs> what's a good uh, What's a good YouTube channel or website for educators? Uh, I'm going to say it's Lit from PBS Digital Studios. It they go through different uh, pieces works of literature from you know the classics to uh, you know uh, graphic novels, all sorts of cool stuff. Um, and they like to focus on um, minority authors, and it's just it's just a really cool channel, and it's really well produced, and the hosts are really great. Um, so yeah, definitely check that one out. Uh, give us a daily, weekly, or monthly routine every teacher should get into. So uh, outside of taking care of yourself and exercising, and sleeping, uh, crossword puzzles, uh, especially in the morning when you could, it's best paired with a cup of coffee and an everything bagel sandwich. If you can, if you're able to make that sort of thing happen, but yeah, it keeps your, keeps your mind sharp, gets your, gets the, gets the creative juices flowing to start the day. And finally, what is the best piece of advice you've ever received? Don't be an idiot. Michael Scott. It's a good one. So when I, whenever I'm about to do something, I think wouldn't an idiot do that. And if they would do that, <laughs> I do not do that thing. <laughs> Oh my god! How yeah. simple. There you go. Yeah, I and, and I'll kidding aside, I would the one thing I would say to to teachers and really to anybody like that is is just do something you're good at because it's going to bring you joy. Like that's that's just a, it's I don't even know who said it, but I uh, came across it one day and I just wrote it down, and it's just a good good thing to to remember to do. Love it. Well, Chris, I want to make sure that our listeners can stay connected to you and all the work that you're doing. And um, would you mind kind of sharing where is the best spots to stay connected? Yeah, sure can. So uh, me personally, you can follow me on uh, Twitter or Instagram at the Science Jedi, all one thing. And then uh, obviously follow our show at Sci, it's, uh, at Sci Around Cincy with the Y at the end. Um, and we put all our videos on our website at sciaroundcincy.com. And what's cool, if you, know, you get to the website, there's um, a ton of free resources that go with each of the episodes. So you can connect what your kids watch in the show to what they need to learn for, um, for school. So there's discussion guides, there's, uh, you know, activities, a lot of which you can do at home. So it's actually a really good uh, uh, remote learning resource. And uh, you know, look us up on YouTube and subscribe to our channel. And, um, you know, don't forget to share with your friends and your family and, you know, any other random person you run into. And, you know, you can find all the links and resources and everything we've talked about in this episode over at teachbetter.com, as well as the really important links for connecting with Chris and seeing what they got going on, checking out all the resources and the YouTube channel and subscribing over there. So make sure you head over to the show notes at teachbetter.com for all of that. Be sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming episodes. And if you can give us a rating and review, we'd really appreciate that as well. And let's take this one step further. Think of just three of your colleagues who need to hear these amazing stories and connect with these amazing educators and share this podcast with them. Chris, this was awesome. I really appreciate you coming on and chatting with us and uh, allowing us to get to know you and your story and just having a little bit of fun, man. Thank you. This was, this was great, guys. This was wonderful. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. And until next time, let's get out there. Let's teach better. Mm -hmm.